drop the mic moment. What a way to go, Literally, Serena. I dropped the mic. Good one. That was pretty quick for your uh, geriatric mind over there. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, no help, Ouch. Rocky. No help nope. on that. Yes, yes, I am the Zoom Gremlin. Mm-hmm. That was the idea, just to go look. And I ended up coming home with a 12 Pro. Wow. 512 gig beast. And now, from the Blind Ability Studios, it's time for Tech Ability. Like safe recording. There it is. I've always used a male Siri, but he just sounds so smarmy. I don't know what it is. He just sounds like he has I don't want to help you. What do you, what do you mean? I help you? I don't, I don't know that. <laughs> I don't have to know that. I'm built into this iPhone. I could sit here and say stupid things all day. And what are you going to do about it? I mean, he's just got this tone. <laughs> so beneath me to help you. Welcome to Tech Abilities. I'm Jeff Thompson, and in the studio today, we got a full house. We got Serena from Colorado. How are you doing, Serena? Doing well, Jeff. Just well? Just That's well. It? Would you rather me say fantastic, stupendous? Ooh, wow. I'm out of action. I like that. That's good. That's good. That's a requirement to be on the show. All right. <laughs> way to go. You qualified. And ding, all the way ding. from California, we have Rocky Gomez. How are you doing? Hi, Jeff. I'm doing well, thanks. Well, we got two wells. All right. (laughs) Wish I was wishing. (laughs) Uh, And we have a special guest today coming all the way from Nevada, the desert state. We have Angie Fisher. How are you doing? I am excellent. It's great to be here. Thank you. Good. Excellent. Wow. She ranks, girls. She Mm? does. Yeah. It's coming up Halloween here. A little spookiness going on. Mm? You feeling it? Take a treat. There you go. Yeah. Do you think trick or treat's going to happen this year? No, I don't think so either. It is in our neighborhood. <laughs> is it really? It is. Yeah. Really? Yes. We are. No. We are. We are definitely planning on. I mean, it's well, the one thing. I mean, everything's been taken away from this poor kid. Like, mm-hmm. um, oh, we're, we already told him, sorry, your candy's going to chill out somewhere for three or four days, but we are yeah. going to let him go out Whoa, and trick or treat. You can have it. Get yeah. replacement candy. You should go out a, a few <laughs> days ahead of time. Get some stuff. No, we already no? have so much candy in this house. Our house always has candy. He'll be okay. So there's stuff to snack mm. on in the meantime. Yes, That's there's not always so candy in the house. He'll be okay. And he'll be wearing a mask. And I mean, Plus, you know, it's wrapped, right? It's wrapped up. So I don't think it's candy is the issue that, you know. No. Other- he'll be wearing a mask. He'll take hmm. a shower when he gets home. We'll go through his candy three days later. I think he'll be okay. So there's no community bobbing for apples. No, Ugh. none of that. Which that was mm. always disgusting if you really think about it. Like it that's is, yeah. it's yeah, super it is. nasty. Yeah. Mm. No. It's gross. People having their mouths all over all over the oh. apples and it's like Oh, I got one. Ew, ew. Oh god, mm. and we did that when we were kids. It's like <laughs> it that's is. nasty. I can't believe we did that. We did we all did it. Especially if you're last in line. Mm-hmm. If you're last, uh, there's like already some bites out of some of them too. apples. And germs yeah. and just nastiness. Yeah. But think about it. Just nine months ago we thought it was cool to blow out candles on a birthday cake. <laughs> like and then everybody oh, yeah. would eat it. <laughs> <laughs> mm. You know what? I never thought about that, Serena. It's so gross. I mean, now I'm really, disgusted. You, who's by gonna it. blow at a cake, and who's gonna ever eat a cake that somebody blew at again? I'm not sure. Do all of you know where your microphone has been? I mean, I'm just saying. Think about that. I did drop mine on the floor last week when I bumped into it. <laughs> oh, hmm. drop the mic moment. What a way to go! Literally, Serena. I dropped the mic. Good one. That was pretty quick for your uh, geriatric mind over there. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. No help, Ouch. Rocky. No help no. on that. No, in fact, the funny thing is I dropped my mic too. And it was a complete accident. <laughs> I put a standing desk riser in here and I had the mic on the desk and I just, it was a little too close and I went smack. And it was a small mic and it flipped off a little stand I had it sitting on and it went flying behind the desk. And usually I'm pretty careful with stuff. I thought, how did I manage to do that? It was a real feat to have to go back there and pull it out oh, that's a pain yeah the, the listeners out there are all probably curious everyone's been doing zoom what what kind of mic are you sporting there rocky well it Uh-oh. depends this that that pop actually, quiz that mic <laughs> <laughs> pop quiz mic quiz right <laughs> the mic that i dropped was not the mic that i'm using the mic i dropped was a mic that i was going to use for something different and it was a it was a uh smaller pretty inexpensive mic actually that is a, a knockoff but I, it was the um it was the uh what do you call that? Not the Q2U. It was the... the Geriatric moment. 23... <laughs> <laughs> we heard ATR that. ATR 2100. The, what is that? 
that is the same as the Samsung Audio GT Technica. was at the 2100. Yeah, it was AT? the, 20, the ATR 2100. That's a nice microphone. Affordability, lifetime warranty, good stuff. Serena, what are you sporting? Whatever you told me to buy. <laughs> it's a Samsung something. The Samsung Q2U. <laughs> same mic, yeah. It's the same. Same guts, same everything. Mic. It's The casing's yeah. just a little bigger. I, it's a good mic. That's a very affordable one. Anyone who wants one of those two mics, the Samsung or the ATR 2100, you can get those and it's either USB or XLR. Just plug them in. Very versatile. Comes with a little stand. And apparently very durable. Obviously, you t- <laughs> both of Pretty you. Pretty durable. Since we've both dropped ours. <laughs> <laughs> they can fly behind the desk. <laughs> Angie, out there in the desert, what are you sporting for a microphone? I'm using a Rode uh, NT-USB Mini. Ooh. That's a Rode mic. mic. We all sound good. Mm-hmm. That's a nice mic. Thank you. I love Rode mic. Me too. I got the KSM 27, the vintage one going right now from Shure. That's S-H-U-R-E. Uh, yeah, good mic. Large condenser. Ha! Well, my microphone is an ABDSC9 CQV7 3000 ABCD7S9S 11X Max Pro 8000 Nick Knack Party Rock Give a Dog a Bone Higgly Wiggly Jiggly 59000 Universal T Vision T Mobile just announced coming out with three tiers of television. They want you to disconnect, cut the cord. What do you guys think about that? You know the question that I have, Jeff. You get one guess because you know the question that I have. 80? Yes. Audio description. (laughs) Will it have audio description? Mm -hmm. Will the app be accessible? I guess that's two questions. I got to tell you this. Right before the show, I went onto the website. I typed in T Vision and brought me right to the site. And all of a sudden it says... Click Alt and any key if you're using a screen reader. Oh, geez. And it wouldn't let me out. And then I wanted to go to this list. So I, you know how I'm yeah. feeling right now about their accessibility from day one. So <laughs> it's like, mm, put me in a different box, That's I tell you. But yeah, I'm kind of excited for it because we don't have enough subscriptions out there right now. It's nice to have choices, but I don't know. Do we need one I'm going to need you to get a little more sarcasm in your voice, <laughs> say <Josh>. like <laughs> You need to say it like you mean it with you need, the sarcasm. You need you to put a little more there. emphasis behind that. Somebody's going to take you seriously. Do we really need <laughs> another Crazy. subscription really? service out there? Really? A little more How many smorgasbords are there? This is like going into country buffet <laughs> and oh my gosh, I don't know. They, what are they going to have? 30, 30 channels, $10, $40, $50. Lots of sports, tiers. it looks like. I kind of like it. I'm a Comcast hater and we've had Comcast for so long and I, I am one of those people. I just see them gouging, you know, hey, get this great deal for, you know, two years. And after the second year, all of a sudden, oh, the price is going to go up in the in the second 12 months, you know, $150. And every time I knock it down, I find that before I know it, I'm paying 180, 190 bucks again, almost $200 a month for cable and internet. And yet, my partner's the cable guy, so we keep it. And I keep thinking, you know, these over the top services would be the way to go. But I don't know, there's so many of them. And I'm like you, I want audio description and I, I want everything. You know, I love YouTube TV until they jack the price up on that. And it once the internet goes back up to, you know, if you drop the TV and the, the bundle that they try to sell you, then they raise the internet. So in some ways, I wonder if you're really saving any money at all by taking advantage of these external services, because at the end of the day, you have to have this one for this and this one for that. And Well, by the time you add them all together, mm. it's right. almost yeah, where you were. Because the thing that people, I'm not sure... I refuse to use CenturyLink because I think they're shady. I hate them. Um, they they've suck. done some super shady things. But with Comcast, you're limited to, I think it's 2.2 terabytes right now because they gave you an extra like 20% for COVID and everything. Yeah. But if you want the unlimited, you're paying an extra $50. And then you, you know, you add all because when you're, when you cut the cord, you're streaming everything. So it's it's just, it's this endless vicious cycle. Yep. I don't think you say much at the end of the mm-hmm. day. If your internet goes back up to 70 bucks and your subscription is $40 or $50 and you, you know, you, you end up, I mean, I thought it was so cool when YouTube TV came out, but I don't know anymore. I'm not, I'm not sure that I'm sold on them. You get the convenience of, of streaming to 
multiple devices instead of just being stuck with your TV. But yeah, it's getting a little ridiculous. I mean, you're, you're being nine ninety nine to death. So I'll probably try it, but I don't know. Just to see. I like having the options. When I had the trailer up in Wisconsin over the summer, I had digital antenna, you know, the local stuff. And it just flickers, you know, it cuts it, uh, 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 like that sometimes, you know, mm-hmm. it's a digital breaking up and stuff. And you get like channels like, where'd they find this channel? You know, it's like all old dusty or something i don't know you don't really get a selection so you really start to miss having the options but i don't i don't know if i'm gonna cut the cable i'm a comcast user i use the stream app on my phone you know it works for me right now i agree with you all you get that campaign goes on pretty soon that fades away then the next one then you call up you complain then all of a sudden they fix it and you feel good for a couple months and then pretty soon there it is again like you said, Rocky, it creeps right back up. So I don't know. This is another feature. I, it's I'm curious, like Serena said, is it going to have audio description? Is it going to be accessible? So far, strike one. I don't know. And HBO has some big breaking news that I'm sure you're dying to tell us about, Serena. I am so excited that HBO, specifically HBO Max, they are very specific in their press release, will have audio description and increased accessibility beginning in 2021. I'm actually hopeful it'll some of the audio description will start creeping in a little bit sooner because I happen to know for a fact that there has been recording of audio description going on for quite some time now for some back catalog things and some newer things and things like that. So I'm excited because there's a lot of HBO shows that I've just wanted to watch. HBO probably has the most complex shows out there that are really hard to follow without the audio description. So I can't wait to dig into that catalog. Game of Thrones. Yes, ma'am. I will not watch Game of Thrones. I I can't do it. Oh, God. oh my God. It's so good. Oh, don't get attached to anybody. Don't. Just don't. don't. I want to watch Read The, the Wire with Read audio description if they do it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Adaptations suck. I've never seen one episode. Never been a fantasy person until I saw that, and I'm I'm mm-hmm. not typically, but that just neither in yeah. the writing. If it, oh, it's excellent, it's just phenomenally excellent. It's really good. It's just so well done, and they. It's mm-hmm. sad that it wasn't done completely. I'm sorry, we're totally jumping off, but I'm sad they weren't done with it by the time they m- made the TV series because they had to take some liberties, and who knows where the real story is going to go. But they're fabulous, and HBO that needs description. It needs description. Things even like The Sopranos, you. Know? Yeah, but yeah. things like Oz, I know they're a little punchy and they're a little hard for for a lot of people to take, but they're very hard to follow if you like complex kinds of things like that. And they don't have audio description because they're just so busy. I love HBO stuff. I that's mm-hmm. wonderful news. I'm glad to hear that, Serena. Yeah, they said starting March 2021, which at first I was like, oh goodness, that's so far away. But <laughs> it's, it's almost not. Here. It's, it's almost here. It's yeah. about to be November because we've been in COVID land for so long that we have no sense of time anymore. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And I think that that's about the same timeline when Hulu started rolling their stuff out, which don't get me started on them. I feel I feel like they're doing the bare minimum. <laughs> but mm-hmm. I can tell you there's so many, so many hours. I think they said the first time in March, I'll have to look back at the press release. I feel like it said there would be like either 1,500 or 2,000 hours of streamable wow. content with nice. audio description in March. So and then it was going to like double and then double again or something like that each year. So it's going to be a massive, cool. massive wow. amount of content that we're able to have some access to, which is super exciting. Oh, just between HBO and Disney. Can you imagine the backlogs that are going to be piling out? Yeah. Whoa. Mm -hmm. And then all the new shows too, as shows come out, because HBO Max is adapting some different books into series and movies and things like that. Books that we've probably all read just within our community. So it'll be just really, really nice to have that access to that high quality television again. Can you imagine Stephen King being audio described? Oof. Well, there's quite a bit of it. Oh, there there's is? quite a bit of it already. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there is. quite a bit of it already. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. Although, if you've read the books, most of his stuff is easy to follow, except for a few things where they just decided, hey, let's not have any dialogue in the last 15 units. I remember trying to watch, I think it was the golden years. And I was like... Okay, that was What's great. What's going on? This <laughs> from, is really exciting. Totally, the show ended, you know, from nice, about nice 42 music. on, all I heard was music. Yeah. i really like to yeah. know how it ended and what happened. Thank you very you much. Yeah, I was so. instructed one time to do something out of the ordinary, something that I wouldn't do and stuff like that. So I went to the theater and I saw Pet Cemetery. Oh, um, oh my God. Oh. Oh. That's not, I don't do that. I don't. That was a scary movie. Was it? I, I can safely say that was a scary I mean, movie. That was really I, I could one. see back I think the best adaptation of his was The Green Mile. Mm. That was a good one. That was, although yeah, I got to say, really Jack good. Nicholson plays a really, 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 
really yes. mean, really good, scary. wonderful, scary Jack scary, Torrance. Scary. Really. Yeah. So what yeah. what do you get your books on? That was for the these? best shining. How do you read huh? your books? How do you read your Stephen King? Audible? audible. Mostly Audible. Audible or Kindle. Rocky? Uh, well, <laughs> they go all the way back. So I've read them in just about every format imaginable. I, I don't have any Braille anymore. I've read a few of them in Braille, but mostly it's it's audio whether they came from Bard at one point or Audible now tends to be my go-to because it's just gotten to be so cool. They have a lot more content than they used to. Yeah. Just, I mean, in terms of just oddball authors and fun just stuff. Fun and stuff. the Plus now, if you have the subscription, the Plus catalog mm-hmm. is just like a treasure trove. So I tend to use Audible a little more now, but same same as... Uh, um, oh, sorry, my brain just took a... <laughs> Same as Angie. I'm like, Serena, Serena. No, you're not Serena. The one from Nevada. I'm sorry. Um, it, it, and it's just know. like you. I use Kindle. Oh, what's going on? iBooks. Uh, can you guys hear me? While. I think my sounds just went. We can hear you. Yeah. No, you're okay. She's a, she'll come back. Let's see, see if she great. comes back. There, there's a back. You're okay. Oh, Hope she keeps oh. recording. Her Zoom's going to crash. Okay, I think I'm back. You're okay. You had audio the whole time. That's weird. Zoom does that sometimes, and then it'll speed up everyone. It's Halloween. Zoom is haunted. Yeah, it's haunted. There's, <laughs> there's gremlins in the Zoom. Gremlins in the machine. <laughs> Ghosts in the machine for Halloween, yes. right? Yeah. Yes, yes, I am the Zoom gremlin. Mm-hmm. Every time there is drop in bandwidth and you get awkward silence, yes, that is me. Why, what, what are you asking? Why do I do it? Well, I am a gremlin and, well, to be honest, I'm, I'm very lonely. Yes, I put my information on, on Tinder and apparently when you say that I'm, you are two foot seven, Green and purple and hairy all over. People tend to swipe left. Wah, wah, wah. Yes. My real name is actually Mervyn Gremlin. You know, I just want somebody to love. Serena, please love me. Me, something. That's because you guys are talking about all those scary movies. That's yeah. It. That's what it was. <laughs> we cursed it. <laughs> Well, it is Halloween time. We mentioned bobbing for apples, and I've heard you scored pretty good there, Serena. You got a new apple in your stables out there. Jeff, I got to hand it to you. That was both the most disgusting and clever (laughs) segue that you've probably ever done. (laughs) But I did. I I got a new iPhone 12 Pro um, on launch day. I had to wait all day. And then finally at 5.30 p.m. you hear the signature UPS squealing brakes. And um, I thought they'd just leave it on my porch, but the dude like waited for me to come get it. And he was like, all right, I'm just going to sign for you if that's okay. I'm like, whatever, sure. Give me my phone. <laughs> like, <laughs> Give me the box. Give me the box. I want the box. <laughs> How, how long did it take you to open it? I actually waited a little while. I opened it, but it was very cold. Like the actual phone was phone. freezing. So I let it come to room temperature before I turned it on. Yeah. And it took me three times to, tr- to set it up. Like I, I, I don't know. I was putting in the wrong something. So You should listen to the Tech Abilities. They'll show you how to do it. <laughs> give us an email. If you have any questions on how to set up your phone, give us a call at 612-367-6093. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> It was just rotten luck, really. <laughs> I hear it feels really good when you hold it. The edges are, are straighter more now, more not such a chambered. And it's a little heavier, too. It's kind of like we were talking about before, like how the iPhone 4S kind of felt substantial. Mm-hmm. I would say that's what this one's like. It feels quality. Oh, battery. Um, it does, but it doesn't feel different at the same time. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't feel like... Like, when, we, when I switched from... The 6 to the 10, it was like, whoa, this mm-hmm. is way different. But switching from the 10 to the 12, it's not that much different because there's even some cases that would make your phone feel like it had the square edges, even though they're yeah. rounded. Sure. So it, I, it mm. wasn't, I don't feel like it feels that different in my hand, honestly. Interesting. Well, Angie, yourself, you were going to wait for the Max because you, you like the big iPhones mm-hmm. and you had the opportunity to go to an Apple store and check it out. That was the idea, just to go look. And I ended up coming home with a 12 Pro. Wow. 512 gig beast. I always tell my wife, <laughs> I'm just going to go look at the Apple store. Just going to look. Gonna go look at the Apple store. You can't, <laughs> you can't do that. You can never just go to no. the Apple store and look. <laughs> I'm learning this about myself. 
I have no, I had no, no self control. So I re-upped my Apple upgrade program, and I'm proud owner of a. Angie, yeah. did they have the other phones? Uh, no, they just had the 12 and the 12 Pro. So there wasn't even a mock up of the Mini or the Pro nope. Max for you to feel wait. and get an idea what they feel like. Gotta wait until the. 13th or so. Isn't this weird? You guys live in two different states, but you're on the same podcast today and you got the same color. Blue. Ooh. What's up with yeah. the blue? Halloween. It's because uh-huh. it's so unique. It's, they've yeah. never blue. had like a blue it's, like this. It's as close to purple as they're going to get, I think. It's not as blue as you would think. I'm told that you can barely tell that it's blue because of the stainless steel. Like it's not as blue as you would think. Uh-huh. Oh, put a case on it. <laughs> It, well, my case is clear. I have a clear one. I like the edges, though. I love the oh. clear cases. I do, too. Yeah, same case. Mm-hmm. I wonder what percentage of people that get the Pacific blue get a clear you case. because show the color. Th- yeah. Totally want to show off the color. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I know. Yeah. We are totally a one mind, Rocky. This is scary. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. did you get the rose gold? I never, mm. I never wanted the champagne gold, really, color. I wanted the gold, though. I waited no, for the gold. Too pink. I, I, and people were like, you're blind. Why do you care? But I did. I waited. Oh, like, my God. I know. I get that gold. all the time. I and get then I the shoved time. it in a case, but I did the just, just same thing you said. It's just knowing that it's that color. Like, that's your color. <laughs> you chose that color. Right. Yeah. Oh. yeah. But the, the difference, I think, like, you know how the 4 and the 4S had, the sides were more like a matte finish? Yeah. This is, this is shinier, but it's not quite the shiny that the 10 and the 11 Pro Max, like it's not quite that shiny. I don't, I don't feel like it's, it's that shiny. It's shiny, but it's not, it's not quite as like polished. Not as matte finish as the aluminum yeah. either. It's not as aluminum. No, it's not that matte, that matte finish. It's somewhere in between the two. God, I'm dying to see one. It, it just feels really substantial in your hand. It's nice. It really feels good in your hand. People that hear you are going to want to know that. That's the stuff like, what does it feel like? How heavy it, is it? How big is it? When you hold it, what is it? Is it? slippery it's heavy but it's not i don't i don't think it's as heavy as the pro I, i'm gonna be really curious to see and serena you can speak to this too because um i'm gonna be really curious to see what the what the max looks like because i don't feel like this phone is tiny like it's not a a, a tiny little baby phone like it, it's substantial again it feels good in your hand i compared it to my 11 pro max and it really wasn't that much narrower or shorter i mean it, it is but it's not like this huge dramatic difference so I'll be curious to see what the max looks like. When I compared mine to the 10, yeah, like same. I literally yeah, yeah, yeah. set it on top of my 10 as it was like upgrading. And it's this, it honestly yeah. feels like the same It's about the, it's about the same as the 10. Jeez. Um, yeah. But uh, the thing I noticed, because I do have some usable vision, is I turned it on and I was like, holy oh, yeah. crap, this thing's bright. And it was only wow. on 49%. Wow. <laughs> I was like, good Lord, I will never go above. It's very bright. And then coming from the 10 to the 12, Low, the speakers on it are like, easily 50 percent louder at the top volume and just even with voiceover you're like it's oh, bassy isn't it down a little it has like, a lot of and then you go to your sound settings yeah. and it's, the mic it's is very so, bassy yeah. i've it's heard very people bassy. use the mic it's and the not, mic okay. is bassy i want to hear a female oh. on that mic i recorded that clip that i that i sent on it's, on the uh, it's hard to the, tell on here Zoom. we'll get that clip in yeah. here but if I do. I me- feel like it has more low end. I I even commented you know, to that effect. Yeah. It, it has more low end. This phone does. <laughs> A- Angie, play us some magnetism. Okay, magsafe recording. Yeah. Oh, fuck oh I love that. That sound. That <laughs> sounds. It's it so final, right? <laughs> There's <laughs> no doubt at all that the charger you're plugged has in. It. You're locked it's in for no it's charging worries. for sure. It is. Yeah. totally charging. Because how many times have you have you thought you had your phone on your Qi charger and you wake up <laughs> and you're like, oh, my battery's dead. Shh. Seven. That is the worst. It is so because it'll even make the yeah. noise that it's on there, but you barely tap it. I plugged my lightning cable into my case between oh, the phone no. ones, and I was like so oh, upset no. because I had to get you going. Thought it was you plugging. must have like a massive case. <laughs> my Uber is three minutes away. Do you have like one of those ginormous ones? Or? Stuck yeah. it in there. <laughs> no, I got the leather one. I just well, I see, was no, sleeping. I was just you know. I will say the battery life is really good on this. There's been people that are like it's barely better than the 11, and it might be worse. And I'm like it's pretty darn good i've never been a person that's ever been able to not charge my phone every day and the second day i i it was still like 75 percent charged when i went to bed so i didn't put on the charger and it lasted the whole rest of the day the next day too and that was with me streaming it for most of the day playing on fate like i i use it a lot and the first day it drained more but that's because it was updating apps and the transfers and all that i'd say day three face id is faster too oh it's way faster it is so much faster and the buttons 
really? the buttons are the buttons are more flush against the side of the phone, like the lock button. I feel like they are. What do you think, Serena? I didn't notice because I have the case on it, so I'm like, I don't. I didn't. I don't know. I guess they are actually now that I'm like looking at it. Yeah, they are. They're not as round. I think they're a little bit flatter. The buttons are a little more flat. Oh, I'm so excited. I want to see yeah. it now. <laughs> you got two more gigabytes of RAM too. Uh-huh. Six gigs in the of Pro RAM. than the twelve. Six gigs. Remember yeah. when we had laptops that had four gigs and we were like, "This is awesome." Two gigs. <laughs> I do. And I now remember. our phones have six. Yeah. <laughs> Thinking, when am I ever going to fill up a 100 gig hard drive? Really, I've got all these CDs here. I'm never going to fill that up. And now there's... I had the first Diamond Rio MP3 player. <laughs> I um, remember that. And it came with 32 megabytes of in built-in storage. Thirty two People would shake it, saying, seeing if they could get it to skip, you know. 32 megabytes. I mean, Two megabytes? <laughs> 32 megabytes. I, I could get a... Two albums. Megs, oh, not even gigs. I, I, I would take two vinyls. Yeah, how many? How many is that? Like, gigs, so you had Megs. 12 songs? Well, no, you, you yeah. do some down a little more and you can get them on there. Back then, they didn't really have the high <laughs> definition yet. 64K. <laughs> Eight. 96 8K. VBR. <laughs> down sample them all so they're all swishy. But it was the first and it was just one of those things. It was just really cool to have it. But, you know, you guys got the phone right now. I really heard some good things about night vision and you know sometimes we take pictures we don't know everything that's happening so i think it's really going to help in getting some good pictures and you don't have to really pay attention as much i will say the camera is amazing i'm not sure if because my phone was so outdated but when you point the camera at stuff now because of the scene detection mode it'll tell you what's in front of you so like i pointed it at flowers and it was like flowers counter laptop keyboard oh well real time real time Mm -hmm. it's amazing yeah even the 11 does that Mm -hmm. Yeah. It'll try to read stuff too. It's a new navigation text, device. And you have to tap where the viewfinder is. Yeah. That's the only thing. Yes. It saw my dog. It said it might be a cat. It saw her ears sticking up. And then I moved <laughs> it and it saw she was mm-hmm. a German shepherd. It's very good. Retriever. Yes. It does that a lot. Wakes over always sees shepherds as cats. Right. <laughs> and then behind it, it saw her bed and it said, behind it is a rug that may have blood on it. Oh, and God. I went, oh, what? Oh, my God. So I went and I grabbed, what do you mean? And apparently there's a red stripe on the top of the bed that's just a thin red stripe yes. but it freaked me out i'm like hey this ai said the bed has blood on it what the hell did he see any blood i didn't couldn't feel anything i'm feeling up the bed he's like oh, no. oh there's like a little red stripe that goes across the top i thought we were done talking about stephen king yes. the ai is really amazing wow. i mean it can it tries and pet cemetery right it, oh she's still alive though mm. <laughs> apparently on the 12th pros it's supposed to autofocus where it thinks that you want to take the picture of too nice. so i'm not sure that'll take some some testing out but um, i mean i took a picture of my son the other day oh, and yeah. I was like this is an awesome picture that you took and you know wow yeah that's awesome that's great it was it the neighbor kid or anything like that <laughs> it really was him <laughs> at the right yeah, actual <laughs> subject well matter. we were in my backyard so i would hope it was him <laughs> there you go that's really cool. that's pretty cool i like that but i am impressed with the camera yeah it, it's good ca- everyone's always like why do blind people care about the camera oh, like, oh, no. they do. God, more people do than you totally. think I, I i love photography absolutely yeah. and i love mm-hmm. it for seeing you know when i used to take amtrak sometimes i used to use it even from like the stairway i would just point the camera toward the car and click on scene detection in some of these apps and they were even crummy apps but they would tell me if there were people sitting in that car or not so i knew you know is it crowded you know is it full of people i mean stupid places i would point it at you know empty seats to try to see like is there somebody sitting over there Mm -hmm. so i wouldn't have to go check it with my cane i mean it's a it's crazy but they can be really useful even with attempts at image detection to find things you know after our last show i really felt good about i can wait on the phones and now you guys are talking about this phone (laughs) and all the features (laughs) And I'm sitting here, I'm like counting my pennies. And I have another nugget that's probably going to make you like, really? So I just read an article. I didn't get to finish reading it because then we started recording. But apparently with the filings that they put with the FCC, the iPhone 12s have the capability of charging devices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Reverse charging. I don't know if they're going to enable it like later in Mm -hmm. an update or something, but the they didn't put the capability in there for nothing. I guarantee mm-hmm. it. AirPods much? Mm-hmm. AirPod keys? Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what would be mm-hmm. awesome to yeah. be able to do. That'd be awesome. Or maybe the AirTags, Joe. Oh, the AirTags. Sure, you know yeah. what? Yeah. Oh, don't even start with that. Nope, they're coming. They're God, coming. I'm going to bet you right so badly. now. I'll bet you. No, yeah, seriously. Yeah, yeah. I'm, mm-hmm. I'll bet you. I'll bet you any money. The event. 
This is the I second predict, coming I predict of the, tags. the 17th of November. I wonder if they'll be in that. 17th. Yep. That's going to be mm-hmm. 17th. That's going to be 17th, right before yeah. Thanksgiving. That's 10 days before Thanksgiving. Come on, Jeff. You want to bet? I actually pushed all the Braille dots on my Braille calendar on the 17th, wiped it out of there. <laughs> <laughs> I also want the over the head e- e- earphones. Oh, the studio? The studio, yeah. Oh, you should talk to Rocky. Yeah. She's got a whole supply of, you know, if you want the vintage ones, you want the first one. She's edition, got like 20 AirPods over there. <laughs> sets, four sets. Oh, I only have four. I don't have 20. Well, yeah, so that would be, how many is that? 16, 8? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's individual <laughs> pods, but... I'm with her. I have a ton of Bluetooth earphones. Thank you. Um, my fiancé kind of goes, why? No, I, it's important. <laughs> I have very specific use cases for every single one of That's them. Right. <laughs> so- <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> right. Are they all AirPods, Angie? Because they're all AirPods. <laughs> no. No. She has four sets of AirPods. No, no they're all kinds, <laughs> all different kinds. Ah, uh, yes. Raquel and Angie, is it? Yes. You all are here because you have a problem with purchasing an unusual number of Bluetooth headsets. Would you say, Raquel, that you have a problem? <laughs> no, you don't. You don't think that purchasing, let me see, according to my files here four pairs of airpods that that's not a tad bit over the top no you sure okay you, you, don't, you don't think you're crazy in the least hmm i see okay um angie, angie no don't don't cry don't cry we're gonna get through this we're gonna get through this and you're saying that the real crazy person is this individual called um jeff that's what you're saying jeff jeff is a problem not your airpod no? okay hmm. and how does that make you feel uh, Serena, I have to say, if I could, if I could turn AirPods Makes one and two into AirPods Pro mm-hmm. and Pro and Pro and Pro, I would, mm-hmm. I would do that. I only have one and two because they were here first. I like the pros. I got a question for you. Have you ever connected one setup like to your phone and then another setup to your computer and put your left one in and you got your computer? And, uh... One in each ear. Yes. Nope. Yeah. No. Nope. People do it though at work all the time. I've done it so they can get audio from two sources. Yeah, mm-hmm. I have people that do that, or they're already connected. They just put one. You're all about the stereo. I do. I, I, yeah, I used to do the one ear thing all the time, but the stereo is too cool now that it works right. It's neat to have like the swappability between your watch and your phone and your iPad and your Mac. Do you like works. that? So tell okay. me, do you like that? It's it's okay when it works, but it it's a I don't know. Bag. I like it. I think it needs a lot of refining, <laughs> but it's a good idea. I just wish it would switch when I wanted to, kind of thing, rather than when it was. Yeah, to. we haven't figured that out. We've all got these little mystery oh. stories. Yeah. I wanted that for years and years. I Same. just coveted that. And I was telling Jeff, I said, I'm waiting for this to work. And they got mm-hmm. it working. And I used it for about a week. And, and they I broke told it. Them last week, I said, I hate it. Yeah. I hate it. I can't. Because it just switches when I don't want it to. Right. And then the watch won't let it go. And- yes. Mm. Yeah. Once the watch grabs it, it's really hard to get it to go back to the phone. That's it. You can't, you have to push it back. You have yeah. to, I had to go tell it not to connect because I had the hourly little oh, vibration yeah. on every hour. So when it, when any little sound picks up or happens Ping on the watch, it yes, goes ma'am. Here. Yes. Yep. Then it interrupts what, what you're reading. To. When this is happening, do people walk up to you on the train and go, are you okay? <laughs> no, because I commute with a bunch of Silicon Valley nerds and they all have AirPods. They get it. Oh, so they, they get, get it. it. <laughs> Absolutely. If anything, they have, they have, I find They're doing the same cool thing, stuff from so. them too. Yeah, mm-hmm. we all have laptops and iPods and iPhones and AirPods and they had MP3. They had Diamond Rio Volts too back in the day, a hundred years ago. You know, they're all Silicon Valley nerds with a long commute. So, uh, so the big question is, Serena, are you happy? I am. I really am. It's a faster phone for sure. Siri still sucks, mm-hmm. but whatever. I, I am really happy with it. It's very, very quick, very, very responsive, super punchy. Siri s- still sucks? What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. the good sarcasm. Good job, Jav. <laughs> hmm. I asked Siri some questions for Halloween, and I you know, went through the devices that I do have. And just, just for kicks, I'll pull it up right here. Hey, Googs. Tell me a Halloween joke. Which ghost is the best dancer? The boogeyman. <laughs> <laughs> the boogeyman. Tell me a Halloween joke. Why are vampires so easy to fool? <laughs> because they're suckers. Oh. They're Yo, suckers. Alex. <laughs> Tell me a Halloween joke. What do you call it when a zombie goes to the bathroom? A brain dump. Oh. Yo, Siri. <laughs> Tell me a Halloween joke. 
Sorry, I missed that. Could you say it again, please? Hmm. I seem to be having trouble hearing you. <coughs> Sorry about that. Enough said. I Enough didn't said. get that. Yep. Could you try again? I found this on the <laughs> web. Oh, <laughs> she of course. Was... <laughs> that happens so much. The thing that's happening to me is I have two iPhones, mm -hmm. one's for work and one's, you know, my personal yeah. And I can ask Siri to do something on one, and it's like, sorry, something went wrong. And then I'll go to my other one, and it's fine. And they're both on the yeah. same network. Like, it, there's no rhyme or reason to when it works and when it doesn't. Yeah. Yes, and if you use the male voice, he sounds so sarcastic and cheeky when he says, sorry, I don't know that. You just want to give him a smack. It's like, I've always used the male Siri, but he just sounds so smarmy. I don't know what it is. He just sounds like he has I don't want to help you. What do you mean? I help you? I don't, I don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to know that. <laughs> I'm built into this mm -hmm. iPhone. I could sit here and say stupid things all day. And what are you going to do about it? I mean, he's just got this tone. <laughs> it's so beneath me to help you. He's cheeky. The next big question. Rocky, are you still waiting? Are you going to do it? Do it. Do it. You know do what? It. I came this do close it. to do pulling it. the do plug it. on do the 12 it. Pro. I went up there and actually in the... Pro <laughs> Go. Get She's psyching like, me out here, getting get me ready. In the process of getting ready to customize my phone, I applied for the Apple credit card because I saw the thing pop up again. I thought, well, let's try this again. Last time it wanted my ID. And apparently I didn't take a clear enough picture in the back. So it gave me the finger and said, no, try again. So I thought I'll apply for this again. And I got it. And then I started thinking, well, maybe I should get it and you know, do the yeah. no interest, you know, pay it off thing. Because usually I just buy it. I kind of, as I was sitting there, I thought, you know what? I, I, I've i always had a little bit of an infatuation with the bigger phones. And I don't know why, because I have no this vision. This is the biggest. And I don't really need the extra screen real estate. I, I do use Braille mm -hmm. screen input a lot, but I'm okay with it on the 11. Uh, really, I, I'm fine with it there. I could even probably do it on the mini or the SE if I were so inclined. I used to do it on the 8 and stuff, but... I, I really, I'm just curious. It might be too big and it might give me the same annoyance that my iPad mini does, but I kind of don't think so. And I'm just so intrigued. I know it's way more screen, you know, power than I'm ever going to utilize and more camera than I'm ever going to need. But there's part of me that just, I don't want to jump into the Pro until I've seen the Pro Max. So I did. I sat on it. I figured it, the, the longer I wait, the prices are only going to come down. And I want to wait until the other phone is released before I make that final decision because it's just, I'm so curious. And it sounds like they managed to smush even the 12 Pro Max down into something that's pretty manageable. I mean, I don't imagine it would be a pocketable phone necessarily, but it sounds like they've managed to go edge to edge and really get in, it into a case that's fairly compact for, for the screen real estate it packs. So I'm loving the battery life and I just, I think I'm going to just jump in and go for the big one. But should we play the, the main again. safe the sound again? Okay. Yes, yeah, we should play it again for you. The MagSafe recording. There it is. Do I will right say now, that the 12 Pro is very pocketable. It is. And you know how girl jeans are. We don't have good pockets. Um, yeah. mine's, mine fits in my pockets. It sticks up though, right? Like the 11, I can stick it in my pocket. No, but not, it sticks I, up I, I usually put pocket. it in my back pocket. Wow. So it's not it's not too bad. And then it even in my front one it doesn't stick pocket. up too bad. <laughs> is it so is it, is it like the 11 Pro size cuz the 11 Pro is smaller than the 11? Honest, I mean cuz the 10 and the 11 Pro, I mean they're all kind of the same size. So it's honestly about the same. The 11 Pro. It's honest cuz I literally set the 12 Pro on top of the 10 and it takes up the exact same amount of, of real estate. I don't know what they did but I think it just stretched, it thinned out the bezels more maybe or whatever, but it is not mm -hmm. much bigger. I think your 12 Pro is more along the lines of the size of the 11 Pro, if I understand correctly, case-wise. But so was, the, so was the 10 though. So like there wasn't a 10 Pro back then. It was just 10. 10, yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm just, I'm coming from the 11 though, which is also a 6.1 inch screen, but I think the 11 as it stands is bigger footprint wise. I think I, I could be wrong. But I, think I think it's a bit wider. I think it's a little bigger. So I might I like so the 12 better, especially with the edges, then because the 11 is just big mm -hmm. enough. And, you know, that might just kill the Pro Max. But if the Pro Max is not much bigger than what I have already, 
and I can get another three hours of battery life, I might just jump for it. I have to see it. I'm so tired of buying things online, stupid COVID, and just guessing. Uh, yeah. I'm not usually yeah. like that. I love to shop. But November 6th. Not having the ability to see well, it. With, I want to see With phones, you want to see it. You want to get it in your hand, into your hands and look at it. I came from like the big phones. I'd done the big phones since they were, first were available with the 6 Plus. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I like the 10, the form factor of the 10, the size of the 10 was really, it, it just was a good size. And so after doing the huge phones for a while, you know, for years, I, I, I love my big phones, but I'm like, I'm going to downsize this year and see what it feels like. And I like it. It feels pretty good. You know how like Freedom Scientific has the shark, you know, and stuff like that. They should oh. send out little balsa wood fake things of the phone so you can yeah. get it, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, a little sample mm -hmm. size. They make replicas. They do. Actually, and they're on eBay. I buy them a lot to demo um, tactile screen protectors in the store. And I love when people steal them off my table at convention. For those of you listening, if you've been one of the people to lift one of the iPhone Ooh. replicas and try to go upstairs and charge it up, kudos to you. And good luck with yeah. that. All the buttons are real and they flip Sucker. and they push and everything and the ports are real, but there's nothing inside. It's just a screen and a bezel and a case. But there are real buttons and switches, so it does actually feel like a legitimate iPhone and and I always have a little secret chuckle whenever somebody swipes one at a convention because I think, yeah, you go up and try to charge that. But they're usually about 10, 15 bucks. You can get them online. If you want to confess for stealing <laughs> something at the convention, give us a call. Give Jeff a call. <laughs> it's the COVID iPhone. 612-367-6093. We'll listen. That's the number. That's the number. Yes, I am Montgomery Styles. I'm an attorney at law representing the interests of my client, Roger Big Thief. We are going to sue Raquel Rocky G. My client honestly stole a stole an iPhone and to his disbelief, the iPhone was fake. Now, when somebody who has been a professional thief for over 25 years, a pillar in the community, there's an expectation of value. So I ask you, who is the real villain here? The person who stole the fake phone or the person who put down the fake phone? Who's the real villain here? Rocky G. We're going to sue your pants off. Are you going to give them uh, immunity there, Jeff? <laughs> uh, well, you, it is Halloween. We'll give them something trick or treat, right? <laughs> I don't want those replicas back. You can keep them. I don't want them back. <laughs> But they do. They feel like real phones. They have the camera bump and everything. I mean, it's kind of amazing when you see. And they're just used mostly for demo purposes. But they have a little Apple on the back and everything. It could be a legitimate iPhone case with no insides. So they have them for every model. The other thing I'm looking forward to on November 6th is the HomePod minis. I'm just really curious about them, you know. I do like the idea of them. Me too. I mean, we do also have the Google Nest audio. I think they're going to be interesting. You know, they pair up for 99 bucks a piece. They pair up stereo, and you can do a lot with them. Mm. So, what is going on over there? <laughs> Did, they, Did you not pay your rent? <laughs> Did somebody fall down the stairs? <laughs> <Somebody> like, <laughs> like, what is that? What <laughs> Nobody's owning it. <laughs> someone just, wow. someone stole your furniture. When you get off the podcast, <laughs> you're going to turn around and go, You better hide your phone. You better go find your iPhone. Somebody's going to steal it off the nightstand. Go grab it. And if you know who Sounds stole it, like there's your like phone. a whole MMA fight Look going on behind you there. It, find it. <laughs> like, that was pretty cool, though. But the Google Nest is out, and I think it's kind of interesting that they're flooding the market with these again. again. Well, yeah. you know, you got the, the Max. Then you have the the Nest Audio, and then the Nest the Mini, mm. and the Minis don't connect up stereo wise though. I really like reading the descriptives that they use. Full sound, it'll give you full sound if you get two, you have full sound. But then as soon as you read about the Nest Audio, it does say stereo sound, so they do pair up all that stuff. But I was going through the Google Assistant, and I asked it to be my interpreter for Spanish. And oh, sure. no matter what sentence I would say, it would repeat it back. So I was like, you know, as soon as you realize it's working, then it c does it continuously and you can just keep going with it. It's like you're just kind of coming up with these sentences like the rhinoceros was in the carrot patch, you know, <laughs> like whatever, you know, and it just says it and you go, wow. So we were talking one time, Rocky, in your store, someone 
that spoke a different language. Mm-hmm. They didn't. Something like that would be really useful in that situation because it's so fast. It's just bang, bang. I really like that. Another feature that it has is the continuous conversation or a continued conversation. After you ask a question, it'll go beep again, and then you can continue on and then just say thank you, and it shuts off. I kind of like that, but I remember shutting that off at one time too because, okay, I'm done. One question at a time. The other thing is the voices. They have a, a slew of voices you can choose from, but they also got the Samuel Jackson voice in there. It swears, so you can shut that off. I don't know if you want those F-bombs flying around the house all the time, but it's kind of neat. I wonder if Samuel, they said, yeah, throw a couple of F-bombs. Really? <laughs> kind of cool. But I don't know why I'm going off on the Google stuff, but it was just like I decided to dive into the assistant. And once I was in the assistant, you can just talk to it there and get answers. At least I got some Halloween jokes that way too. It made me think that Siri doesn't have an app. No. no. I feel in a lot of ways the Google Assistant has it all over pretty much everybody as far as just getting quick mm-hmm. information quickly. Facts. Yeah. One of the things that I used to do for my for my job was lectures or just kind of a, a demo of Alexa. Uh, we did used to do the HomePod, but there was kind of no point because Siri is just Siri. So it was kind of between <laughs> a, the A-Lady and the, and the tube. I don't want to set it everyone sing off. Uh, we don't want to have a call to all Echoes thing, but it was between the Echo devices and the Google Home devices, or now the Google Nest devices. Uh, but yeah, the Google Assistant is excellent for just its connectivity to, you know, well, to Google. And yeah. It's good stuff. Which do you like better? If you guys had to pick a smart assistant that you would say you prefer Google. to use overall, or do you find that they're better for different things? Google. You too, Jeff? I would have... I'm just always curious. I have to have both because I did two ecosystems. I got the Ring mm-hmm. system, mm. and that works good. And yet mm-hmm. when Google and Amazon want to fight a little bit, it's really interesting, you know? With Google, you, you can't get <laughs> Apple Music on. But with, oh, that's with true. The you can with the yeah, sure. yeah, you get it there. So uh, that's seamless. So I'm torn between the two. I think when I want facts and just real good facts... I, my go-to is Google. However, sometimes if I want some in-depth stuff, I think a, the A-Lady can go a little, you know, would you like to hear more? You know, it, it, you carry mm-hmm. on like when it's digging deep into Wikipedia, you know, way into the weeds. That's kind of good. But I've never, like with Halloween, you think that Siri would tell a joke. No, nothing. Well, maybe it's not Halloween yet. Maybe... Maybe it has to actually be Halloween for Siri to know what Halloween is. I mean, I'm grasping at straws now, but I'm trying to find some find some redeeming quality to it because it was the first one. It was here. It had its inception long before Lady A and Google's, you know, smart A smart devices existed. And boy, it it's it hasn't done much since the beginning. It's kind of stagnant. I'm giving Tim Cook a fail. Even Phil gets a failure on this one. <laughs> Serious. A little bit of a train wreck. Well, I was talking on a podcast to Rita Howells, and she turned me on to labeling surfaces. Like when you get appliances, she happened to get a recumbent bike and wanted to label it. So she contacted Halo Tactile Systems, Halo Systems. Mm-hmm. I was talking to Rocky about it, and you at the adaptation store, yeah, adaptations.org. We have some Halos. Yep. You have them for the washer and for the stove and for the microwave. So depending on if you want to label your shortcuts or you want to label your buttons or you want to label the washer is really neat. You can see how full the little, there's little, little cutouts so you can feel like where the wash tub is. You can see, is it, you know, all the way full or half full or it gives you little tactile icons that you can stick on the buttons and on the surface so you can feel where to tap or where to start your cycle Mm -hmm. it's pretty creative it's not just um a button a dot it's you can really get creative with it i think it's really cool you know to be able to get these kits and stuff and i was on the adaptation store as well you can get bump dots as well absolutely pretty much any kind of tactile dot touch dots bump dots locator dots the little tiny ones so if you have a keyboard one of those really flat keyboards and maybe you just want a dot on some key that you need to hit often but it's up on the top and oh those real tiny really ones, ones, ones so you can little close squares the with a bump in them they're just yeah a little circle actually with a small dot in the center and they come in orange if you're into trying to look for them but they're also clear which is what i tend to like with with teaching students and stuff so that 
other people can use their keys as well. But they just, just a real surreptitious little dot to help you nail that key. I remember seeing, and I was thinking if I'm going to label all my appliances with little markers and stuff like I didn't want to have blaze orange all around the no, house. No. Just for the aesthetic. So I got the no. clear. Uh-huh. And I, I'm going to give you a good report back when I get back with these because I think they're due tomorrow. So that'll be cool. I think you're going to be really impressed when you get them. I've ordered a couple sets of them, one for my stove and one for the microwave. And they used to be like a foam material, but now they're like almost like a hard plastic and they're more durable now. So you can wipe them off and stuff. They're a lot better now. Yeah, they're really, really nice. I absolutely love them, especially the ones for the microwave. It has, it even has a popcorn Yep, and a little potato. Looks like a little football. (laughs) It's a little baked potato. (laughs) It's like little popcorn kernel. I mean, I had to learn And they're not very expensive at all. Yeah, they're they're like $6 or $8 something. There's a little drop of water. Mm -hmm. I always found them was on her store on Etsy. Hmm. Yeah, she's on Etsy. I I, I saw them on your price. I think you were $6.99. On your packages for mm-hmm. the microwave, mm-hmm. wash machine, and uh, stove. Wash the stove, the stove yeah. yeah. So, which ones did you get? Did you get? Did you get a different kind? For uh, she, she has on the Etsy site. She has the whole household package. Oh my god, it's I gotta get package. that. I'm gonna do it. It's 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 a large. So it's like you know you get eighteen dollars for the those three sets, but with the whole package plus clear. Clear is almost double the price, so I think you can get the other colors um, right around um, 23. Yeah, holidays are coming, so they make such a great stocking stuffer, and they're not expensive, so they're just kind of a fun thing to have, so uh, maybe I'll reach out there. Thank you. I appreciate that. Cut the middleman out. Deal with. Well, yeah, but, you know, adaptations.org is where I went to look for them first, and then I I sent her a message because we did the interview where I learned about it, and so I'm going to be talking to her tomorrow. Wow. And get a little... A little something. I'll probably slide it into this podcast just a little bit. Oh, that's fabulous. Hey, Tech Abilities. This is Ann DeWitt from Tangible Surface Research. Thanks very much for having me on your show. You can find my product at tangiblesurfaceresearch.com slash halos, H-A-L-O-S. Have a great day. Well, I believe that she can customize for you too. Like if you need like I don't, I don't, I can't think of what specifically you might need, but if you have like an odd thing that you need to have some access to, then she can customize things. Thank you, Jeff. That's awesome. Serena, what you're talking about, she can make custom stuff because you got the compassive and then you have the, and resistive. So one is like the microwave where you push and the other ones are, you just touch the surface and bang, you know, the conductor is your finger. So it's hard to do. And I sent her a picture of my air fryer. And what I did was put a bump above the arrow going up and below the arrow going down on each side. One is for time and one is for temperature. So if I put my hand coming down, I can feel the bump and I know it starts out at 370. So six taps up will bring me to 400 and thus that's where I go with that. And it sets at, starts at 15 minutes. So if I want to change that. So I'm interested. That's really ingenious though to develop a guide that puts your finger kind of between the two buttons so that you can go to either side of the tactile line and touch the surface because this is the problem, right? It's the Mm-hmm. It's not the if you could feel it and have the it's button a, be it's obscured, a hot potato. Could, yeah, yeah, it's, exactly. Mm-hmm. But the minute you touch it to see what it is, you're going to tap it. So it's a it's a it's an ongoing thing for sure. Some people like to use those spot in line markers again for the same kind of concept to draw lines around the buttons. But still, you know, you got to be a little bit careful with that or you're going to inadvertently tap one until you kind of get your bearing. So I think it's just a matter of how much, you know, some of us can get pretty used to that, but somebody maybe that's got some a little bit of trouble with dexterity. It's, there's always different solutions for different people, you know, so I, I love that, though, that there's a whole house kit. That's great. Well, she's, like like Serena mentioned, she'll actually work with you. She'll look up the product. She'll look up the thing and might tell you, you don't need anything from me. Here's what it works mm-hmm. and, you know maybe mm-hmm. something actually wraps around then that's not good but if it's you know if your dial stops and comes back then you can count but she's really into this and they do a lot of work so i'm glad i do it there's another thing i got is the the keurig coffee latte maker now that's all tactile buttons and i did put a couple of dots on there just so it's if you're just going to make coffee boom 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 you don't even have to think early in the morning before your coffee come on <laughs> 
But if you're going to do the latte, and I'm going to do a demo on this because so many people want to know what it is. But the thing is, when you're shopping on Amazon or on Apple, if you ever see something that it's been refurbished, I don't hesitate with Amazon or Apple because they have it. such a high standard. Mm -hmm. And this usually sells at $169.99, something like that. I got mine for $129.99. And it's brand new. I, I don't know the difference. That's just a point out there for people that refurbish stuff. If you come across it on those two sites, it's probably pretty good. So Serena. So Mr. Thompson. You're still Googling over your phone? Tell, tell me one thing about your phone. What do you notice is the biggest difference? Like, I suppose iOS 14, you it just lit up for you then. You could you go in and set all that up. Was that really fun to explore finally? I haven't dug too deep into that. I, I immediately turned off the recognition stuff. It's still doing it in Facebook though. I don't I don't, I'm just too lazy to go figure out why. Um, and it's not just the automatic mm -hmm. alt text. It's kind of reading both. But for me, it's just the speed. Because my phone was so laggy and so buggy that I was just getting frustrated with it. So the, the speed boost is what's most impressive for me. Right. Well, good luck to Halloweening this year. Yeah. Should actually be warm, too. It's supposed to be in the 60s on Halloween here. Oh, those were the days. Those were the days. I woke up to 12 degrees yesterday. <laughs> oh, don't worry. It was like five on Monday here. So yeah, <gasps> yeah and snow. We got several. And the kids had a snow day on oh, Monday, geez. actually. A snow day. <laughs> I love well, it. I love it. My son still had to e-learn. But yeah, it was a snow day for him. His e-learning only took him maybe two or three hours and he was done for the rest of the day. So Rocky, you getting out and about? Yeah, we don't have any snow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little chilly in the morning. I think this morning when I got up and took the dog, it was about 43 degrees, but it warmed up to the mid-70s, so we don't have snow. We're probably looking at a little bit of rain, but I do remember being a kid and going trick-or-treating on Halloween in the snow, so it still kind of mystifies me when I'm here in California and I can wear my short sleeves and on Thanksgiving or go out on Halloween in my short sleeve shirt because <laughs> it's only in the 50s or something so hmm. it's autumn weather chilly weather but it's beautiful and so much nicer than the triple digits we've been having so does the cold in minnesota just make my brain go numb and not think about moving ever <laughs> like hmm. probably <laughs> how about you angie you going out trick-or-treating no rain nothing nothing, nothing uh, like that and and yeah i i want to go trick-or-treating just because it's fun but what, what are you gonna dress up this year i don't know I'm not going to go. I, I, I probably won't go, but it's still fun to do it. You never. It's just one of those things that never gets old. You could go as a masked COVID survivor. I could. I could dress up like the iPhone. <laughs> there you go. The iPhone Pro. Put glass on the front and on the back. and Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's an iPhone. Glass on the front and on the back. And right. I know. <laughs> I had to figure out how to navigate. That was... One Pro with a cane. I don't know. That would be interesting. You'd leave the camera on scene detection. There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Flowers, oops. Or just keep saying something went wrong and then you could be Siri. <laughs> a two-person case. Oh, in the like front. A, you, you know, could... <laughs> put a, per a sighted person in, in the front part. You know how warm that would be? You'd be covered in this glass and stainless steel thing. It would be so hot after be you horrible. did about two blocks and be like, we got to take this <laughs> iPhone off. It's too hot in here. Yeah, we're done. We're done. That's sort of cool, though, in a It'd way. It'd be perfect for Colorado, though. <laughs> Person-sized iPhone. <laughs> I mean, it's not so dorky. People would be like, oh, look, it's just dressed up like an iPhone. <laughs> They'd all know what it is. Or dressed up like an Apple logo with legs and arms. Right. iPhone 12 promotion. Go to your local mm -hmm. Apple store and purchase. Someone goes as a MagSafe. You guys walk by Big each other. Big magnet <laughs> on your back. Fuck. MagSafe. And they'll make that sound. <laughs> that would be hilarious. That would be funny. Well, I, I was thinking of getting one of those little cannon things. They shoot T-shirts out at the sports games and stuff like that. So the neighbors, when they come trick-or-treating, you can just shoot candy at them. Just boom, boof, boof. Social distancing. Shoot candy. Yeah. Stay away. Yeah. Or Stay I'll away. shoot. Or I'll shoot you with candy. Well, I hope all of you make up your mind before November 6th because I still have to make up mine too. So we got a lot of good stuff coming out. I'm going to work on you. In the group, I'm gonna I'm gonna bug you on WhatsApp do and be it. like, "Come on, do it, do the do the deed, upgrade, upgrade." I'll send you some more MagSafe messages. I'm gonna send you subliminal <laughs> messages now. Upgrade, dunk MagSafe. I'm gonna bounce them right up the rocky. <laughs> you know you want. Yeah, should be clicking every day. You'll get a fuck in the morning. You know you want this. MagSafe. 
Dunk. Click so. MagSafe. You know, I kind of want to see the cases. And as much I as I, I, I want to see, see the wallet too. case, I'm just curious. Yeah. I want to see. I just want to see it. <laughs> it's so silly. Yeah. But. but anyways, we hope you enjoyed. And until next time, bye-bye. Enjoy the phones. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. The most interesting and most disgusting segue goes to... Jeffrey Osborne, Wiggly Piggly, Archibald, Sigourney, Cornelius Thompson. And then cue our funky music, right? <laughs> and for more podcasts with the blindness perspective, check us out on the web at www.blindabilities.com, on Twitter at blindabilities, and give us a call at 612 367 6093. Leave us a message and let us know if we can put your voice on the next podcast. Drop us an email at info at blindabilities.com and download the free Blind Abilities app from the App Store and Google Play Store. That's two words blind abilities and from all of us here at blind abilities through these challenging times to you your family and friends stay well stay informed and stay strong i want to thank you for listening hope you enjoy it and until next time bye bye When we share what we see through each other's eyes, eyes, we can then then begin begin to bridge bridge the gap gap between between the limited limited expectations and the reality reality of blind abilities. abilities. For more podcasts with a blindness perspective, check us out on the web at www.blindabilities.com, on Twitter at blindabilities, download our app from the App Store, Blind Abilities, that's two words, or send us an email at info at blindabilities.com. Thanks for listening.